when the governments were bent on building a strong governmental structure for themselves, for their states, they will forget the social, socio-cultural development part that would allow people to grow and to be free and independent to pursue their own sets of values, cultural traits, religious values or practices. A lot of these things are happening, being ignored only to wait for more problems, more conflict, more tension in the future. Civil society can certainly bridge the gap or gaps between the political process, the economic process, and the socio-cultural process. As I said, as we embarked on establishing a community of caring societies who would be closer to the people who would be the voice and the heart of the people in the absence of what they have in Europe called the European Parliament. We don't have an ASEAN Parliament. It was suggested by Thailand back in 1995 in Brunei, but never got that, never got off the ground. But without some kind of people's assembly or of an institution or forum that would reflect the hearts and the minds of the people of the region. Various civil society, Sapa, Apa, or others, or 51 of them here, you see. Yeah, no, no, 71 is all, but just the civil society is 51. It's listed as civil society, 51. We need you. Yeah, we need your help. And the space will be open for the civil society to take part, to contribute, to help the people of ASEAN, ASEAN feel that sense of belonging, sense of ownership of the process of the institutions and mechanisms of ASEAN. Eventually, we would like to create that double identity within the ASEAN grouping in every society, in every community, and that is, I am a Thai, but I am an ASEAN too. I am a Malay, I am Malaysian, I am an ASEAN too. I am an Indonesian, I am an ASEAN too. I am Vietnamese, I am uh, whatever, but I am an ASEAN too, much like what it is being developed in Europe. I am a French, but I am a European too. So, ASEAN is aspiring to establish the ASEAN community by the year 2050. Very, very, very ambitious. There will be three pillars. One is political security, community. Second is economic security. The third will be socio-cultural community. Civil society can be involved, can participate in all three pillars. But what is very, very wide open now is the socio-cultural. Because it's new, because it's still looking for its own identity, because it's looking for its own space, it is wide open for all of us to help create. The environment is here, health is here, human rights is here, democracy is here, participation here, Gender equality is here. I mean, it is wide open for all of us to be 
evolve. Of course, the political security uh, uh, pillar arena is open. Of course, the economic, a lot of you would be interested in the economic arena because that is going to be very, very critical in the community building. That is going to be make or break the community. That is going to be indicating which group will get what in the programs, in the policy, in the direction of uh, development of integration from now onward. And that is going to have tremendous impact on our society. You too will have a role and a contribution to make in the economic community building. So let me just stop at that and challenge you that ASEC, ASEAN Secretariat from now onward will be a networked Secretariat. We welcome your participation, we welcome your contribution, we welcome your criticism, we welcome your pressure, we welcome your influence because we are in it together in order to create that community called ASEAN community of societies of caring and compassionate societies without all involvement and all contributions from all entities and sectors of ASEAN 10 and others from outside helping and contributing. The dream of the ASEAN community after 40 years will remain elusive, will remain distant and will remain abstract to most of the 560 million people. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Surin.